Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvellous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome everybody to our online service here from St. Guthlax Church in Fishtoft, part of the Holland Deanery Coastal Cluster in Lincolnshire. We're very pleased that you can join us on this Easter day. We're going to listen to the first of our songs. If you want to, you can join in at home. All the words are on the screen for the service. See what a morning. Thank you. 
come then to our prayers of penitence. We recall those things that we wish to confess to God today and receive his forgiveness, won, of course, by Christ on the cross and rising from the dead. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And so we praise God once again in the words of the Gloria, which we haven't been saying, of course, throughout Lent, but we praise God as we say together, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we have our collect, our special prayer for today. Let us pray that we may reign with the risen Christ in glory. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we have our first reading from the Bible. Joyce is going to read to us from the Acts of the Apostles. Thank you, Joyce. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead and on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Joyce. So we have our reading from the Gospel. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He has defeated the powers of death. Alleluia. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Alleluia. He has the words of eternal life. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16, beginning to read at the first verse. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go, tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's not a great ending, is it? So I can understand the urge to try and fix it. The ending to Mark's Gospel, I mean. Many of our Bibles contain two more endings, but they were most likely added later. I can understand why they were added, because while Mark starts out in the usual fashion, it's early Sunday morning, it's still dark, the women are going to the tomb to tend to Jesus' body, the stone is rolled away, they hear word that Jesus has been raised, and they're sent back to tell, Mark seems to botch the ending completely. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were alarmed, they were afraid. The end. Do you see what I mean? It's the only resurrection story in the Bible where Jesus never actually makes an appearance. That looks like a bit of a problem. Second, the, the women disciples utterly fail, which seems a little surprising. After all, the young man in white has met them with the classic greeting that always signals good news, do not be afraid. And if that sounds familiar, well it should. Throughout the Bible, from the prophets of old to Gabriel greeting Mary, every time someone starts a speech with, do not be afraid, you know what's coming is going to be good news. Well, otherwise they say, you better be afraid, be very afraid. And so the young man greets Mary with the signal of what's coming is good news. He offers the best news that these women could have imagined. Jesus, who was crucified, has been raised. He is not here. Then he gives them clear and simple instructions. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, just as he told you. That was back in chapter 14, verse 28. And yet, after all this, they fail quite miserably. They flee the tomb. They say absolutely nothing to anyone, not even Peter, who God knows needs some reaffirmation after he denied that he even knew Jesus. And so there you have it, a resurrection scene without Jesus that seems to end in failure. Looked at this way, I can totally understand how a, a well-intentioned early Christian, after reading this ending in dismay, suddenly thinks, oh, I can fix that, adds a nice little ending. And while it sounds like nothing else in Mark's Gospel, at least it brings things to a, a better end, ties things up nicely. So what's going on? Perhaps you might think that Mark just wasn't very good at endings. I mean, after all, he's not really very good at beginnings either, is he? 
Matthew gives us that long genealogy, tracing Jesus' ancestors back to Abraham. Luke tells us a tender story of Mary and shepherds and angels. John offers a profound theological hymn to the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And then there's Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that's it. No drama, no poetry. There aren't even any verbs. Just seven words in Greek that sound more like a title than the introduction. But this ending actually fits into a two-part pattern that runs through the whole of Mark's Gospel. The first part goes like this. The people who should know what's going on, like the disciples, don't really. Jesus predicts his passion three times, and yet they still don't understand. They're surprised by what happens, and they don't believe what he said. Again and again, the disciples disappoint, so perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that these women who, let's remember, had the courage to stay with Jesus to the end and even ventured to his tomb to tend him, nevertheless, they fail like the other male disciples. The second part of the pattern goes like this. The people who do realise who Jesus is can't really be trusted to tell. Take, for instance, the demon who, pos who possesses a young man that we read about in Mark chapter 5. He recognises Jesus, asking, What have you got to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? The demon knows who Jesus is. But can you count on a demon for a testimony? And then there's the Roman centurion, who immediately after watching Jesus die, states, Truly, this was God's son. But can you count on a Roman centurion from the occupying army for a testimony? Or the blind man who calls out to Jesus, the son of David, but who can't see anything to say that he's seen the risen Jesus? Or even Peter, who says that Jesus is the Messiah, and then says, but you can't die. And so Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. And so there we are. All the people who should know don't. Those who do can't really be counted on. And so it appears that we're in a bit of a bind. Except, except there's one other person or group of people who have seen and heard everything that Jesus has said and done. One other who heard Jesus' predictions and then watched as they came true. One other who listened to the amazing news at the empty tomb, heard the order to go and tell. And do you know who that other person is? It's us. All the readers of Mark's Gospel, all the hearers of sermons today. Mark writes this open-ended Gospel that threatens to end in failure precisely to place the burden of responsibility for telling the good news squarely on our shoulders. Mark isn't terrible at endings, it turns out. He's brilliant. And by ending his account in this way, he invites us into the story to pick up where these women left off, and indeed to go and tell that Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised and is going ahead to meet us, just as he promised. <clears throat> well, once you realise Mark's better at endings than we perhaps thought, it seems worthwhile to look again at the beginning. And then you realise that when Mark says, this is the beginning of the good news, he doesn't just mean this one verse, Mark chapter 1 verse 1. He's actually talking about his whole gospel, all 16 chapters that is. They are just the beginning of the good news. Because the story doesn't end with Jesus' resurrection, but continues moving forward all the way up to our own day and time. But I think our life together is something like this too. We're often tempted also to fix bad endings, and that's understandable, it's even reasonable. But it's not always our choice. Because we worship the God who meets us precisely at the point where things seem the worst, not merely to fix things, but to redeem them and us, turning what looks like an ending into a new beginning, taking what looks like a failure and offering it back to us, as an opportunity. And can then we proclaim that this story doesn't end, not where Mark left off or any of the others, but continues into our own lives? Can we invite 
people into this story now to take up their parts, to carry on with the witness to the crucified God? And can we tell people that we still live and love and struggle and die and hope by faith in this great God who loves us? That sometimes all we get is the word, the difficult, challenging, yet hope and faith-creating word, that Jesus is risen. And even though we may find it hard to believe, yet when we come together each Sunday, whether that's online or in person, we will hear this word and be drawn to faith and pulled into the story once again. Can we dare to say these things? Well, maybe we should ask ourselves, if we don't, who will? And if not now, well then when? And if not us, then who? The Word of God, by which I mean Jesus Christ, not the Bible, the Word of God is for all people at all times and in all places. So it cannot just be for the people who happen to be in a church sometime. And that's why we're called out by God to tell the story of his love. Even the finality of death is gone. It's gone because in his own death and in his resurrection, his returning to life, Christ has overcome, defeated and brought his light into the darkness of death. Today's celebration of the Eucharist, the thanksgiving for the work of Christ, is a foretaste of that heavenly banquet, not in the quantity or quality of the food, of course. After all, we may have just a taste, but rather in the reality of what we are tasting, the body, the blood, the soul and divinity of Christ. Remembering Christ's life and death and resurrection in this way shows us the magnificent love of God for each one of us because it links us to the Last Supper. Not only does Jesus tell us at the Last Supper that this bread is his body, he tells us much earlier in John's, John's Gospel that he is the bread of life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, Eucharist, we are remembering this tremendous truth. But how much more is that true when we celebrate on Easter Day? And God entrusts the continuing story of this great truth to us in humility, in our faith, our commitment, our struggles, and our willingness. We offer a word that is still as fragile and as powerful as it was when those faithful women approached the tomb in the early morning so long ago. They got caught up in a story with an ending that while it may not have been what they expected or even wanted, was nevertheless precisely what they needed. And so also are we. We are caught up in that same story. And we may look at the ending of Mark's gospel and think that it should end dot, dot, dot. He is risen. Where will God take us to tell of his wonderful love? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now we have our next hymn, Now the Green Blade Riseth.
And now we declare our faith in God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we share the peace of Christ with one another. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Lord of life, with unbounded joy, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. <clears throat> By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. <clears throat> the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks almighty and eternal father and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in humankind the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of eternal life. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. 
who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Behold God's love for you. And so let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. If you would like to join us in spiritual communion, please follow the words on the screen at this point. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I humbly pray that you may enter spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen.
not as passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Amen. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to the last of our hymns for this service, Thine be the glory. Thank you all for joining us for this Easter Day service. Uh, we're very pleased that uh, you were able to. Next week, uh, there won't be an online service from us, but the Diocese of Lincoln are producing one, and we'll be giving you details of that uh, in the intervening days. And so before the blessing, a very happy Easter to you all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today and always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>